Hello there everybody, Technojock here, with a bonus tutorial, kind of filling in the blanks video. Um, in my recent Qantas video, I kind of glossed over um, changing out my Blood Magic setup. I lost some footage and then glossed over in the video um, a fairly significant amount of the work that I did, so this video is hopefully going to cover all the things that you need to know to be able to recreate what I did. Now, up until recently, I had been using a Cursed Earth, Cursed Earth slash Darkroom spawner with the Well of Suffering ritual uh, to fill up the blood in my blood altar, and then I went and changed that to a Woot mob farm supplying the blood um, via the ritual of the infernal machine. So here we go, let's have a look at this and um, you can hopefully make it in your world. Now I should say um, this is using the Qantas mod pack but it will also work in Feed the Beast Beyond and um, a few other of the kitchen sink mod packs. Really you need blood magic and woot, extra utilities and um, I'm using RF tools for the power transfer, but any kind of um, mod that's got power transfer that you can transfer a fairly good amount of power at once. So Draconic Evolution, actually additions, RF tools, um, I think Endryo would do it as well, um, stuff like that. So here we have a Woot mob farm. We'll start off with that. There are four tiers of Woot Mob Farm. Um, and the benefit of the higher tiers of Mob Farm are twofold. Firstly, the higher tiers um, allow you to uh, spawn different mobs. For instance, the, the tier one spawner, um, you can do zombies and skeletons and fairly basic mobs like that. The tier two, uh, which goes out to the orange blocks that allows blazes and then the tier uh, three goes up to enderman and the tier four allows you to do mob bosses such as the wither which we have got set up here because that's what i've got in my um, Qantas world we're in my tutorial world at the moment so um that's what we've got set up just now is this thing here doing the wither um, now, the other benefit to having higher tier mob farms is that you can have more upgrades. The upgrades that you can see here, you've got um, rate upgrades and mass upgrades. They increase the, um, well, the rate ones decrease the time in between spawns of mobs and the mass upgrades increase the number of mobs spawned each time that happens. We've got looting, which as you can imagine increases the drops that you got, and obviously in this situation I've got the blood magic upgrades. Now upgrades themselves are limited. Um, tier 1 mob farms can only have tier 1 upgrades. Uh, tier 2 upgrade, uh, tier 2 mob farms can have up to tier 2 upgrades, and tier 3 mob farms and tier 4 mob farms can have up to the um, third tier of upgrade and in order to have the second and third tiers you've got to have the first and second tiers of those upgrades so to get tier the looting three upgrade I've got to have one and two there already um, and that about covers that now putting on upgrades increases the amount of power it takes quite considerably as you can see 31,424 RF per twick to do this um, but it is spawning 8 withers every 2 seconds um, and that's with looting 3 on it as well so that is going to be a significant number of withers um, and that's going to be a significant number of nether stars what we've got underneath here is the mob factory extender got a couple of them going up and under and that connects up to the bottom of the mob factory spawner grinder. 
um, and then we've got this mob factory proxy and that allows us to connect all the stuff down here rather than having it up there. It just keeps things nice and tidy. So that's a little tip for you there. And we've got a drawer controller set up here um, that will be taking all the loot that comes from there and putting it into these drawers here. As you see, I've already set this basic drawer up to accept the nether stars. And then we've got an advanced power cell here that will be set to output the power into this and power our mob factory thing. Um, behind here, I have got an extra utilities node set up into an ender chest, but you could have some sort of other um, item transfer system set up with conduits or with the blood magic nodes. Um, that's what I'm using in my, my uh, uh, Qantas world. But here I'm just using this transfer node because it's easy. And then the so the nether stars will come out of here and into this ender chest here and they will go over to this ender chest here which will in turn feed the nether stars into this nether star generator which I have got turned off with this handy dandy redstone signal so I don't need to come over here and get withered. Um, that is outputting its power into this advanced power cell which is linked with the power cell card to the power cell over there. Uh, you might be wondering why I have got uh, a dragon egg on top of this. It's not a solar panel as it claims it is. It is the dragon egg generator giving me lots and lots of grid power. I've got 500 grid power from that and it's just uh, my creative world way of doing this. In my real world, uh, in Qantas, I have lots of water mills set up. But that is because I want to get myself do -do -do, some upgrade. Ooh. Upgrades, where are you? These things, don't need 64 but I am going to put in 20 of them. So that's going to take quite a bit It's of power. 20 grid power, you can see, is now being drained just from having those in there. But that will increase the power output of this considerably, and it will also, in it will also uh, increase the speed that it goes through a nether star. We'll see that in just a minute. But that's us pretty much set up in terms of our whoop, woot mob farm. So we can turn that on, um, or turn it off rather, so now it is running. See, factory stopped, factory's running. Cool, all good. And then I think if we just turn this off, so the nether star generator runs and should be powering that there, and we should see power going in here. We are not seeing power going in here, not sure why not. Not getting power there. Why are we not getting power here? It is full up. That is not full up. Why is that link ID 2? It should not be link ID 2. It should be link ID 1. Thank you. That'll be why. Pop it in there. There we go. We've got lots of power. And this now should be running. It is running because I just saw some more loot go in there. Yep, factory is running and it's got 20,000 RF in it just now. And um, we can uh, take stuff out of there. Oh, it's already got quite a lot of experience. Let's put that in there and the experience should go into there. There we go, it is now filling up that. And you will see we've got over half a stack of nether stars in there, which are being pulled out, probably. Yep, and being put into here. And we can see that the nether star generator is going at the moment, going great guns. There we go. That is running and it is keeping going quite nicely at the moment. Thank you very much. Yes, that is is pretty good. So the next part of this, now that we have got infinite power effectively, that's generating a ridiculous amount of power, I'm putting it all into here quite happily. The next bit is to be able to get the bit that's doing the blood here to go into our blood altar. So the reason I've got this wool set up, 
It is not part of the mob farm. It is just a measure up. So this is where the master ritual stone goes. It goes one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one up. That is the closest you can have this. I believe it can be 10 blocks away maximum, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's the closest it can be. Um, because if you can see the ghost blocks there on the far side, let's let's right click this thing, keep holding that down and it will put all the blocks in place. There we go, it's stopped. And you'll see this ritual stone of earth is just sat right smack on top of the um, the mob factory block green. So that's obviously as low as it could go because, um, well, they can't occupy the same block space. But it could go a little bit higher, I think. Um, but don't quote me on that. Um, so we then need to work out where our blood altar goes. And it goes one block, two block, three block, and then the fourth block up. And again, it can be 10 blocks um, above the master ritual stone. But this is the closest it can be because when you expand this out, you need to be able to put your ritual stones uh, or sorry, runes of sacrifice or whatever um, around there like that and that will make us a tier 2 altar and that's as close as we can go there um, and that's that done I'm only going to do a tier 2 at the moment because it's not vastly important that we do this but um, what I will do is I will get myself a blood orb because otherwise I am going to get nauseous very quickly. Right, let's put that in there just now and let's take ourselves our weak activation crystal and activate this ritual. And you'll see a rush of energy flows through the ritual and there we go, we've already got some blood going in there. Let's get ourselves a divination sigil. And Um, oh, now that, that orb is not going to work in that altar because that orb is too high. Blood orb. Let's just get the um, apprentice one because that's the tier 2 blood orb. Let's put it in there and it should start soaking that up. It is soaking it up. current capacity, there we go, it is going, the current capacity is going up, slowly but surely. Yeah, that's going nicely now, and the blood orb really should be, it is, ah, uh, because it's using power as well. But that is your basic setup. Now what I would suggest is uh, we need rune of um, rune of there's one of the runes that I'm pretty sure can uh, make it so it transfers the the fluid through into here more quickly but there we go, oh that's it filled up right now yeah, it's already gone up, I think it might have been yes, it would have been filling up the internal tank there we go and I forgot to bind that to myself. So there we go. That's the blood going way up now. And it's barely making a dent in that. Yeah, it goes down a little bit and then it fills right back up again. So it goes down to just under just under 700, nearly 600, and it goes right back up. And uh, that's going up, so that's sufficient, obviously, to fill up and to power that ritual all at once. And that's you, you're sorted. Um, we'll probably have an utterly ridiculous amount. Yeah, we've already got <laughs> nearly six stacks of nether stars. We've got stacks of nether stars in here backing up as well. Um, we've got so much power that we don't know what to do with it. Um, that's completely full. Just about, pretty much. Just, it's completely full, minus the 20,000 that it's transferring into this, this to keep it running. 
So it's not even running at full capacity at the moment, and it's got full power. We've got all the nether stars we could ever need. We've got a stupid amount of uh, solidified experience that we can use. So it's an XP farm, it's a nether star farm, it's a power farm, and it's a blood farm. That's pretty good. So I hope that has um, filled in the blanks for you. I hope you uh, get some use out of this. Try it in your own world. I'm sure you'll be very popular if you're selling nether stars to people um, and experience and maybe even just allowing everybody to stick their blood orbs into your altar and fill up when need be. Don't forget, of course, that us on the Quanta server have also been using evil craft bound blood orbs to, to uh, tap into that blood source and uh, do cool evil craft stuff by powdering brooms and primed pendants and all that goodness. So hopefully you'll get some use out of that. Um, if you've got any suggestions for anything else you want to see anytime soon, do pop me a comment down below or uh, give me a tweet or something like that. But until the next time, everybody, bye bye and have a funs.